wrench monkey. Sire, it has surrendered. I have imprisoned it in the cargo bay. The Necroton commander hissed at the soldier. You have isolated it? Has it got its suit? His black scales caught the flashing lights from the consoles, glints of orange and green catching the edges. His eyes were narrowed against the glare. No, sire, we agreed its terms and it surrendered in civilian clothes, he added hurriedly. Unarmed. The commander rose from his seat, growling. And what terms did you agree to? I would like to know before their damn fleet turns up. The soldier shank back. Sire, it insisted the crew were released into clear space. We left no transponders working on their life pods. They will die in the dark or drift for years. It threatened to blow the engines if we refused. You told me they were unimportant, that we only had one target. His voice was shaking with anxiety before his commander paused and nodded. Summon a new ship for us. I will set this one to self-destruct and we will take our prize home. The soldier was confused. Sire, is something wrong with the ship? He looked around nervously. The commander grunted. Not yet, but that creature has no doubt planned for this, and I will take no risks on a ship it has already attacked. I have heard the stories and read the intel. I expect its people and those blasphemous computers of theirs are already on the way. We leave now and burn everything behind us. If the soldier was nearly going to say that, that seemed a little extreme, but he trusted his commander. He wasn't sure why the skinny creature slumped in the cargo hold was so dangerous or threatening, but he had his orders. Just to be safe, he called his men and raised the threat level. Then he summoned a new ship. He told it to stand off beyond sensor range and send a shuttle without any transponders. Zero transmissions are allowed. He didn't know why his boss was paranoid about the alien, but he preferred to join in rather than fuck up. Alice was indeed slumped down on the broken boxes that made up seating in this dump. It had taken a lot of fast talking and even faster lying to get the crew out of the way, and now there was nothing but the future to deal with. She didn't recognize the enemy. They weren't friendlies. They weren't known unfriendlies. She had never seen the species before. Her personal shard of AI, buried too deep for these fuckers to find without killing her, didn't recognize them either. She coughed. I require water. One of the Xenos raised a weapon. Fuck. Water, unless you want me dead and there are easier ways to do that. She lay back and closed her eyes. Someone was going to get her report even if she had to go all Australian on them. Dear XCC, thank you for the opportunity to be abducted by the snake people of somewhere in the deep dark. I look forward to the challenges of staying alive in the face of a bunch of murderous lizard people, something that is so rare at home. I will, of course, maintain the highest traditions of our engineering corps and attempt to blow these fuckers out of space and stay alive. Yours fucking sincerely me, another wrench monkey in trouble. Someone threw a bottle of water at her, and since she wasn't watching it, hit her with a thump and added another bruise to her collection. The commander waited impatiently for the shuttle to arrive as he set the captured ship and his own to burn up in the local sun. He approved of the caution that the soldier had displayed as a shuttle flew silently towards them. One less link in the chain and a creative display of intelligence. Perhaps there was hope for his people yet. He turned to the few remaining bridge crew. You will leave all your devices on the ship. I'm sure the council will be happy to replace them, but I will personally shoot anyone that brings traceable or networked gear onto the shuttle. Am I clear? We are dealing with the species that controls all of those systems throughout the galaxy, and we cannot lead them to our home world. His staff began emptying their suits of anything that used power and moved to the designated airlock. The commander felt a true moment of grief as he opened it to the empty void of space and had to watch them die. He prayed for a brief moment and then turned to the weapons console, using the plasma cannons to turn the corpses into untraceable dark dust. He looked out and bowed his head. You served with honor. Hopefully this operation was now completely hidden from all those prying aliens. He began walking towards the shuttle bay to finally meet the target of this whole venture, his heavy footsteps now the last sounds this ship would ever hear on its suicide run towards the sun. Alice stood as the Xenos grunted at her, then tried to pull away as her hands were shackled behind her. Fuck you, assholes! It didn't help, and then a ragged band was roughly tied around her head, making a stinking blindfold. She was pushed back to the floor. Twenty hours earlier.
The Necroton ship went to silent running as the commander reviewed his orders, his tail slapping against the hull plate as his mission became clear. The dull thuds marked out his incredulity as he read a dark future for his men and his command. The orders had been sealed until he had hit clear space, and now he knew why. He calmed his war chief and resealed the orders. No doubt the soldier had his own orders, and between them, they would put this madness to work. His war chief had obviously been expecting the call, arriving so quickly that he must have been outside the door. Sire, I take it you have your orders. His voice showed no emotion, and he stared directly ahead, waiting. The commander sat back. Relax, the room is sealed. Did they tell you why we are doing this? What will happen if we fuck up? The soldier shrugged. Sire, they told me to prepare to take a certain ship and abduct the target. Nothing else except a long list of threats if I fuck up. They don't give reasons to the likes of me. The commander nodded. Well, I didn't get much more. I can list the consequences, though. He stood up and gazed out at the screen. If they find out what we are about to do, or worse, afterwards what we have done, we will be banned from their space, barred from their technology. No doubt those marines and warships that they don't have will make an appearance. And no one will lift a hand to save us. Not against them. They have made it too expensive, too bloody awkward to fight them honestly. His voice carried an edge of bitterness. So we are expendable. The mission must succeed and we, we vanish. The war chief frowned. Why all the fuss? The humans are always hiring themselves out. They're famous for it. Fucking cheaper that this shit storm is going to be. The commander looked directly at his soldier. I don't know who signed your orders, but mine was signed by the Ecclesiastical Council. This is a religious mission. The war chief swore at that. Fuck. Those priests are fond of their martyrs, aren't they? What the hell do they want with a human? The commander retook his seat. Now, what would a bunch of technophobe priests want with an engineer? A human one at that. A race that built its so-called intelligent machines wherever it goes. Blasphemy, they tell me, according to, oh yes, according to our beloved oracle, our mysterious center of worship. His eyes sharpened and his voice resumed command. Get your men ready. I'll prepare the ship. Dismissed. 